You are listening to ChartingWealth.com for Tuesday, the 5th of May, 2015. This is where the markets ended up on Monday. Actually, this chart shows us a two-day chart, two-day trends, two-day candles. That's what we're looking at right here. This is the two-day MACD. You can see the original cross going up there between, this is over a weekend, the 10th and the 14th. And we can see where the derivative oscillator moved up as the charts moved up, and then where it rolled over and crossed over going down after a big down day toward the end of last week. And this is where the markets ended today. Now, if you heard and again, we're broadcasting this for Tuesday, so this is where the market ended on Monday. But if you heard that the market was up 0.32%, well, you can tell that yes, indeed, it was. But look at that little movement inside this big down candle. Does that look like much of an up move to you? Well, it doesn't to me. In fact, it's totally contained within this big down candle. In fact, this wick on the bottom shows that the bears were able to push the market down this far in the two-day period, and then it got pulled up to close there. If you don't know how to read a candle, you need to go to our website, chartingwealth.com, or find it on Twitter or on Facebook, and you can listen to uh, probably the easiest thing to do would be also just to search us out, even go to YouTube, and you can listen to our initial teachings on what candles are. Candlesticks are great. They were developed by the Japanese back hundreds of years ago to actually, they were rice traders, figured out a great way to develop a graphical representation of price movements. Real quick, whenever you see a red candle, it means it started up here, it ended down here. Green candle means the market opened here, ended up here. The wicks that you see, top or bottom, that is where the market got pushed down to sometime during this two-day period, because we're looking at a two-day candlestick, or like on this green one here, it got pushed up this high somewhere during that two-day period. Great representation. You can see on this candle here, it had a lot of up movement today, a lot of down movement today, but ended in a very small range. It opened here, and it moved up to there. Not very much movement at all. So now let's break this down and go back to the four-hour chart and see what we see. You can see a little bit more. This is what actually happened in the market today. You can tell that there was a lot of up movement in the morning and then down movement in the afternoon to end lower. Uh, we attempted to start drawing a trend line for the two-day, but with such little down movement, doesn't do too much for you. But you can tell that the derivative oscillator was losing energy, means that the market was trying its best to move up on the four-hour chart. See where it crossed over going down on the uh, four-hour chart back between the 27th and 28th. And it's trying to cross over, but hasn't. And again, when we go back and look at the big chart, which is what we go by, we are in a down movement on the IYY. Again, total market. So, hasn't crossed over going up. Sure is trying to, but it sure is losing a lot of energy here after its crossover. Will it go back up again? It could, but it's in a down move right now based upon our MACD and where the candles are. So, now let's take a look at SPY, which is Standard & Poor 500. Again, this is an ETF, an exchange-traded fund that tracks that. Where are we there? Well, we've been in an up move the whole time. Never crossed over going down like the total market did. It Again, you're seeing a deceleration in the move. What did you see here today? Well, if you listen to the market mavens, they'll tell you the market was up today 0.28%. What they won't tell you is that over several days before, this up movement is well within the range of the down movement. Not a great up market. Although, according to our derivative uh, oscillator and according to mainly our MACD, we can see that the market has continued. This is for the S&P 500. It is in an up move. Not a big up move, but an up move. Let's look at the four-hour chart. What do we see? Well, we see on the four-hour chart, again, derivative oscillator losing its energy, attempting to cross over, not quite going up. 
Again, like I said, the large chart is in an up move. The small chart is trying to move up. And you can see our two-day trend line that has already been breached going down. Doesn't really mean much to us right now. It's not crossed back over going up on that old trend. So we'll just have to see what happens. But again, currently, SPY is in an up move on the large chart and trying to cross over going up on the smaller four hour or half day chart. Let's range back out again before we switch over. Don't want to confuse ourselves to the Q's. What do we see on the Q's? Well, we see a crossover going up back between that over that weekend between the 14th, uh, I'm sorry, the 16th and the 20th. We had a nice up move and we saw that drop off in the same time period. We saw the whole market and the S&P 500 drop off. But again, like the S&P, there was no crossover going down on the Qs. That is the NASDAQ 100. It is continuing to try to move up. But again, we see mimicked this same up move today of 0.17%, totally contained within the down candle from a few days ago. Again, the market itself, however, is in an uptrend. Let's see what the four-hour chart shows us. Four-hour chart, again, this is interesting. Complete reversal of what we saw before. This is actually not crossed over. This is still on a downtrend and not even close to crossing over as we saw in the S&P. Or we saw the opposite, of course, on the IYY, the total market. So, again, small chart does not dictate what we do or where the mass movement is, but it does help us in figuring out a lot of small charts make a big chart. Big chart still in an up move. Um, looks like, I mean, that, that is getting maybe a little bit closer. Derivative oscillator is losing its down energy, attempting to go up. But again, you know, the, the market somewhat sluggish. What do we see? Well, of course, we are in what time of year? We're out of the beautiful six months. We are entering the summer doldrums where sell in May and go away. We lose a lot of volume. So we'll just have to keep watching and seeing what the market is doing. Okay, let's branch back out to our two-day chart. Let's take a look at gold. Gold, of course, has been in an uh, up move. I tried to cross over going down. Still don't have a crossover going down. However, we can see that the chart on the two-day has been nickeling and diming along. We have drawn a trend line showing that the market is in a down move. We've talked about that. Still don't have a crossover going down, however, on the MACD. One reason is because the MACD is hard to follow when you have a chart that looks like this. When you don't have good, strong up movements, good, strong down movements, what do you get with the MACD? Well, you can get all sorts of false signals or just no signal at all. That's why we drew this trend line and have been following that. We watched gold as it started losing its momentum. Derivative oscillator rotated over here. Not enough momentum, though, with this up kick the next day or over the next two days on the 28th for the gold market to actually have a crossover going down on the MACD. Looked like it was getting close here where we had some indecision back on the 30th. And again today, pretty substantial uh, move down in gold. However, you will hear from the market mavens that where gold ended up today, it was up 0.9%. We're looking, of course, here at a two-day candle showing where gold has gone over the last two days. And gold is still attempting to move down. We have a divergence here between what we see on the derivative oscillator and what we see on the MACD. Let's try to get a better portrait of what's actually going on by looking at the, oops, not the four-day chart, but the four-hour chart. When we look at that, again, we can see a crossover going down on the 30th and then an attempt to recover over the last couple of days. Gold technically still in an up move if you follow the candles on the large chart in a down move. Again, gold is looking to find some type of position appears to be going down at this point and not a lot of energy to push it up. 
Well, folks, that's where we ended up on Monday as Tuesday opens for you with another day of trading. Again, remember, follow the charts, not the noise. More training, more knowledge. We encourage you to go to our website, chartingwealth.com. We appreciate you joining us every day for these important market updates because if you spend a little time each day, you will find that your market knowledge and your skill set gets better and better and you become more and more accurate in your investing. God bless. Take care. Good trading.